there, my name is Dr. Marissa May. In this video, we're gonna be talking about rational numbers and all things, all the operations with the rational numbers. So what is a rational number? Well, rational numbers are numbers that can be written in the form A over B. Side note, fraction, right? Like that's what a rational number is, is a fraction. Where A and B, the top and the bottom are integers. That means no decimals. And we know that B cannot be zero. So think about that. That would just be saying like, okay, you got to have no decimals on the top. So pick any number, 24. And on the bottom, you can have any number you want, but not zero. There you go. That's a rational number. Now, rational numbers include integers, fractions, terminating, which means ending decimals and repeating decimals and perfect squares. So let's think of some of those examples. So an integer like negative four, a fraction like one fifth, a terminating decimal. Let me show you an example of that. 0.237. Notice how it stopped, right? Like there's no more numbers after the seven. A repeating decimal would be like 0.262626 and kept going. Believe it or not, that actually can be written as a fraction. So it's called a rational number. And perfect squares. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, that would be something like the square root of nine. Why would square root of nine be a rational number? Well, because we know that's three. It equals three. But if you choose something like square root of 17, that's not a perfect square, so it's not a rational number. Take a look at the examples I have at the bottom here. Let's see if we can determine if they are a rational number or not. A says negative 3.4. That's a terminating decimal. It's a decimal that ends. So that's a yes, it is a rational number. Look at B. 0.121212121212. Right, it keeps going. That's a repeating decimal, so that's a yes square root of eight. That's not a perfect square, so that's a no. It is not a rational number. And 0 0.141724213 and keeps going. That's not a repeating. Notice in B how the 121212 repeated. Well, in this one, there doesn't repeat, so this is not a rational number. It cannot be written as a fraction. All right, next, let's take a look at converting from a decimal to a fraction. I think there's a three-step pretty easy process. The first step is to take your decimal and put it over one. Let's do that for A here. So I'll take my 0.65 and I'll put it over one. And then I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 100. Top by 100, multiply the bottom by 100. And you can do this in your calculator. 0. 0.65 times 100 will give you 65. 1 times 100 will give you 100. Step two is then reduce. Now, this is where the number might change because I can't divide 65 by 25 like the example has, but I can divide it by 5. So I'm going to divide the top by 5, and I'll divide the bottom by 5. Here's a side note. Whatever you divide the top by, you have to divide the bottom by the same number. Okay, so whatever number you're gonna top, divide the top by, you're gonna divide the bottom by as well. So again, use your calculator. 65 divided by five gives me 13, and 100 divided by five is 20. And friends, there you go. Now I have the fraction that is equivalent to 0.65. Let's do it again with 3.2. So I'll take 3.2, put it over one, then I'm going to multiply the top by 100 and the bottom by 100. That gives me 320 and 100. Now, you got to think about what you can multiply, divide by, sorry, not multiply, divide by. I'm going to divide the top by 20. I'm going to divide the bottom by 20. So 320 divided by 20, use your calculator, gives you 16. And 100 divided by 20 gives you 5. And there's your fraction. Now, you may be noticing that there's a bigger number on top than there is on bottom. That is okay. That's called an improper fraction. 
But it is okay because we notice that 3.2 is bigger than one. So I know I'm gonna get an improper fraction. 16 fifths is equivalent to 13.2. All right, friends, let's go the other way. This time, I wanna convert a fraction to a decimal. This one I really like because it's super easy, but I need you to make sure you have your calculator with you. Make sure that you can use your calculator because you're going to take your numerator, notice that's the top number, and you're gonna divide by your denominator. So you're literally for A gonna type in your calculator, three divide by four. And your calculator is gonna tell you that decimal is 0.75. Do the same thing for five eighths. Five divided by eight gives you 0.625 in your calculator. Now, if you need a calculator, I have linked a free graphing calculator down in the description for you to use. But friends, for these kind of calculations, any four function scientific calculator will work. Next, let's turn our attention to adding and subtracting fractions. I've listed the steps that we'll use to add the fractions here. We're going to first find a common denominator. I want you to notice I'm not asking us to find the smallest common denominator or the least common denominator. I think it's okay just to find a common denominator. And we'll do that on the first problem here simply by multiplying the two denominators together. So a common denominator would be taking 3 and 8 and multiplying them and we'll get 24. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to change each fraction to have a denominator of 24. So I'm gonna take 2 thirds, and I wanna write it with a common denominator of 24. Well, three times eight will give me 24, so I'm gonna write, multiply the top and the bottom by eight. Two times eight is 16. So that 2 thirds, now I've transformed it to 16 24 /ths. Let's do the same for 3 eighths. So 3 eighths, if I wanna write with a denominator of 24, I'll have to multiply by three, since eight times three is 24. I'll multiply the top by three also, and three times three is nine. So now I'm adding nine plus 20, no, I'm sorry, 16 24 plus nine 24 ths. That's step number one. Step number two, add the numerators. 16 plus nine is 25. And step three, keep the denominator the same. So we're gonna put 24 here. Step four, simplify if needed. Well, what we would be looking for here is, is there something I can divide 25 and 24 by and get to reduce the fraction? And the answer is no. So 25 24 is actually my answer here. Now let's use the same approach on problem number two when we subtract. Our common denominator, we would get by multiplying eight times two. Side note, I know this is not the least common denominator, but it is a common denominator, and we get 16. So we'll take seven eighths, and we wanna write it with a common denominator of 16. We're gonna have to multiply by two, since eight times two is 16, and we get 14. So we have 14 sixteenths. Let's do the same thing with one half. I want to convert that to have a common denominator of 16. So I'm going to multiply by 8, top and the bottom, and I get 8. So now we're subtracting 8 sixteenths. So step number two, we subtract the numerators now. 14 minus 8 gives me 6. Step three, keep the denominators the same and then simplify. I notice that 6 and 16 are both divisible by 2, so I'm going to do that. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, and 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. So my final answer here is 3 eighths. I think it's going to help you if you will follow the steps that I have listed here. Just like I was calling them out to myself, you'll want to talk yourself through the process as well. Next, let's look at multiplying fractions. This was probably going to be the simplest operation of the four because we're going to multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and simplify. I like to think of this as multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then reduce. 
So if I multiply across the top here on number one, seven times one would give me seven. If I multiply across the bottom, eight times two would give me 16. Since I can't divide anything into seven or 16, I know this part is done. This is my answer. Next, let's look at number two. We'll multiply across the top. Two times three is six. Multiply across the bottom. Three times eight is 24. Then we ask ourselves, what can we divide by? Well, I see that I can divide by two. I could also divide by three, or I could divide by six. I'm gonna divide by six here, because that'll reduce my fraction. Six divided by six is one, and 24 divided by six is four, so that I get one fourth as my answer. So multiplying fractions, super simple. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then be sure to reduce if you can. For our final operation, we're going to be dividing fractions. I want us to use this three word approach. Keep, change, flip. We're gonna keep the first fraction. We're gonna change the division sign to multiplication. Then we're going to flip the second fraction. Let's do that with number one. We keep the first fraction. We change the division sign to a multiplication sign, and we flip the second fraction. Now, you remember what we did with multiplying fractions? Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, reduce if you can. That's what we're gonna do next. So, two times two gives me four. Five times one gives me five. I can't reduce four-fifths anymore, so that's my answer. But notice I use the keep, change, and flip approach to this dividing fractions. Let's do it again with number two. Keep the first fraction. Change, oops, I almost said flip. Change the division to multiplication. Flip the second fraction. And then you're gonna multiply across the top. Three times four is 12. Multiply across the bottom, four times one is four, and then reduce if you can. Well, I notice both of these, 12 divided by four is three. So I know that three is my final answer. I hope this helps you with all of your rational numbers. We went over the four different operations with fractions. I know there are a lot of details here, so maybe go back through the video taking great notes of all of the examples so you can use them with your problems.